Hello and welcome to the Sisterhood Club podcast, where we empower women with all the tools they need to succeed across life, business and career. We'll bring inspiring stories and practical advice from CEOs, founders and women who are achieving incredible things. So join us and let's shape our futures together. Lauren Oaks, welcome to the Sisterhood Club podcast. Absolutely fantastic to have you here today. Can you start by giving our audience a little bit of an introduction to who you are, your journey, and what brought you here today? Absolutely. Well, I'm so excited to be here today. So thank you so much for having me. Um, I am the CEO of a digital marketing agency. I'm very passionate about leadership, building a strong culture in a company. Um, and female empowerment, of course, throughout an industry which is typically underrepresented. Uh, My journey started in New Zealand uh, about 10 years ago when I I left. I moved to New York for a little bit and basically dived into the marketing industry. And I think marketing industry in New York is probably the most competitive space that you could be in. So I think that really set the tone for my career. Um, Moving to Melbourne, I think this was the biggest step in my career where I joined Megaphone, which was a company of about four people, four men actually, sitting around, sitting around one desk. Um, and the the founder had a really strong vision for what he wanted to achieve, and I could really see myself working alongside that. So, joined the mission of Megaphone, and it's been a seven year journey. I've gone through junior roles in the company. I've implemented a lot of the culture that we have, set the vision. And yeah, moved through yeah, junior, through to management, through to running the account side of things, had this really weird sidestep into running the sales team and being a sales leader, which was something I didn't expect, but also one of the best challenges that I think I've tackled. Um, and then through to the CEO position, which I've been in now for about four years. Uh, the company's now grown to over 100 people, three offices in Australia and in UK and USA. So... I didn't realize what I was stepping into when I started Megaphone uh, seven years ago, but it's been an incredible journey and so much learning along the way. Wow. There's there's so much to unpack um, in there because I'm smiling because I always put myself in the position of the listeners and what they would want to ask you next. And I think the, the thing that really strikes me is how much you've achieved in a seven year period and you've gone in. Um, a company, a small company with four men and you've sat at that table and you have visualized yourself progressing with this company. So my my first question is, what has that seven-year journey been like for you? Can you sort of talk us through how you've navigated from a junior account manager role now to CEO leading an incredible company of over 100 people that just seem to be absolutely crushing it and have now gone global. So can you talk to us a little bit about that process? Yeah, absolutely. I think you can look at a job in a, in a couple of ways. You can look at a job as something that you go to and it you know, pays you and you go home. Um, or you can look at it as an opportunity to get what you want out of your career. And so I didn't look at the job description and think that that's what I was going to be limited to in Megaphone. I looked at that as a guideline. Um, and really tried to find what ways I could bring value to the company, but also develop my career. So little things like, you know, wanting to start an internship program because I wanted to be a manager, but I had no management skills. So I built a proposal around why we should have an internship program at Megaphone um, and did all the hiring. So I learned how to hire as well. And this is all that, this was no cost to the business as well um, because it was all my time that I was investing into it. But we also were, were getting things out of you know working with interns and more ideas and more people working on on our clients so c- coming up with ways that you can get what you want but that also benefits the company I think would be a really good piece of advice to someone who's who's looking to take a similar career path did you which so when you went about pitching that because I think like that in itself is it takes a lot of courage to do Mm. that. And I Mm -hmm. think there's the the thing that we've talked a lot about on this podcast is the confidence gap between men and women. And that to me, like, it sounds like you are quite assertive and quite confident. Do you think that having that skill has enabled you to progress in your career? And if it has, what advice would you give to people who maybe aren't as confident as assertive? How can they 
build up on that skill set as well. Uh, I definitely haven't always been so confident and so assertive. I think it's something that I have put a lot of time and effort into because I know that that's going to help me in my career. Um, I think when you're when you're coming through an area where you maybe are nervous to be that assertive, I think just prepare as much as you can. Know inside and out what you're talking about. So there's not going to be any surprises there. But I think it also comes back to ensuring that you have the competent confidence in yourself to actually achieve what you're suggesting because I think those are two different things. So I knew that I could achieve what I had presented because I'd I dotted all my dotted all my I's and crossed all my T's before I put that presentation together. And so then it's really just communicating what I knew. Uh, and so I think that they can be taken in, in separate ways, but, you know, both of those really help to have that. So prep time and then just back yourself. Mm. Amazing. Mm. I think there's definitely some really good points that you've made there that our listeners will actually be able to really relate to. Um, and I think there's so many women out there that have got really huge career goals, but sometimes it's about being able to relay that to your current position and then having the confidence to be able to map out yourself and put your hands up, tap your manager on the shoulder and say, hey, can I chat to you about what I'm actually aspiring to be and what I'm aspiring to do. What I also absolutely love is your life experience. I love that you were in New York. You actually have operated in in a place where the market is so highly competitive. And I think that that gives you a certain, a certain foundation in life about how much drive and determination it actually takes to be successful. And I think... Georgie and I are both from the UK and my career in the UK actually started in recruitment and at that point that was a market that was so Mm. highly saturated and so highly competitive that almost the skill set and the foundations that I managed to secure in the early years of my career in the UK were phenomenal and they actually set me up for success by the time I came over to Australia I actually didn't find the market as saturated and I thought wow the skill sets that I've gained in the UK, I'm really going to be able to drive something and drive something really well over here. Did you sort of, did you find that the life experiences that you've had prior to starting at Megaphone really enabled enabled you to get to the place where you felt, right, okay, I've got a certain skill set that I can really drive forward and apply here? Yeah, definitely. I think I, I liked to put myself into difficult situations, um, throughout my life I have done a number of different things so like I, I studied in America for a bit as well and I think that was really getting outside the comfort comfort zone really understanding a different culture being being uncomfortable uh, you know as as not fun as that can be at the time that's really the way that you grow and learn as a person um, you know I've been through different competitive sports as well and so I think that also teaches you a really strong mindset and makes you want to win as well So I think that competitive nature as well is something that's always been instilled in me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That that would actually take us quite nicely on to mindset. Um, And in terms of like what you have actually achieved from a career perspective over the past seven years is absolutely humongous. You know, it's, it's, it's so inspiring out there. And I think that it certainly what would differentiate yourself from someone else in your position that was presented with that opportunity. I think a lot of it does come down to the to mindset. Could you just sort of talk to, you know, what what drives you, what what mindset do you feel that it takes mm. to be successful in your career and to sort of drive forward in terms of what you've achieved over the past seven years? Definitely. I think having a really strong growth mindset, I think understanding that I don't know everything and I probably never will. So being really open to the fact that I need to learn constantly to stay up with everything that's changing. I think throughout my career, through the past just seven years at Megaphone, I've had to be a very different person, a very different manager, different leader for every 12-month period. And had I stayed the same as I was, I wouldn't have been able to grow and develop the company and the company would have outgrown me. So even just looking back over the past few years, the way that I approach things is so vastly different than I would have in the past. So my mindset is very much upon learning and constantly exposing myself to new things, whether it's 
just reading a book that's something different than normal. You know, I like to just read as much as I can so that I have all these other different perspectives that I can be looking at. Also, just talking to different people in the industry or friends or colleagues and really just getting people's different thoughts, different perspectives from from different backgrounds. I think that's really important as well so that you can actually have a really well-rounded idea or, you know, well-rounded strategy as to something that you want to achieve. So I think I've always been naturally very motivated as well. So that is very helpful, I think, to pair with the with the desire to just learn. Hmm. I'm smiling because what you're saying is sounds very similar to to my own experiences. And I think that what Pam was just saying then about working in competitive industries, especially when it comes to sales, you are taught from quite a young age to, you know, if you're going to be successful, you have to take responsibility for your own success. You have Mm. to drive, you have to keep evolving, you have to keep expanding your mind and trying lots of new things. You, you also mentioned something really, that I really want to, I'm very curious um, to ask you, Seb, how you handle things now is very different to how you would have handled things in the past. Could you give a little bit of an example of how maybe you know, Lauren, even sort of three years ago, would have handled situation versus um, Lauren now? Like how, how have you changed your approach when it comes to leadership and management? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, even just looking, like I think pre-COVID, even though I hate bringing it up, you know, pre-COVID to post-COVID, it's, it is a very different different world um you know the way that you would handle a problem when it's a you know a smaller company everybody's working in the office it's very collaborative you know you could I could talk to everybody I could everybody's opinion and I could make sure everybody was really happy and confident working together whereas now in a company of 100 people it's a there's a change there's been a shift so people will look to me for direction so I I can't be there stress testing everything with everybody in the company to make sure everybody's happy I need to approach that with a strong, clear direction as to what I see for the company and I need to get people to join me on that rather than developing it together as a team. Does that does mm-hmm. that answer that question? Yeah, absolutely. I think as, as a CEO, you're always trying to drive the company forward and you want people to be you know, looking at that vision, looking to you as a leader to be like, this is where we're going. And then they feel motivated and driven to do the work to get you there, right? I think that's yeah. part of a leader, as part of a role of a CEO. If, if you could go back and, you know, to your younger self and tell younger Lauren something that you feel you've learned over the past seven years, some advice that you would want to give to younger Lauren, what, what would that piece of advice be? I think throughout my early years in my career, I, I constantly questioned if I was doing the right thing. Um, and I think what I've learned is that you know, that doesn't really change. You're always going to have a lot of different options that are coming your way and a lot of different solutions that you can provide to a problem. It's about coming out with the best way to determine the one that's most likely to succeed. Nothing is ever going to be 100%. You know, nothing, nothing that I do and I suggest and I back myself in is guaranteed for success. So I think I would advise myself to reduce some of the hesitation, reduce the amount of time that it would take to make sure that I was doing the right thing But realistically, if I did the wrong thing, maybe I would have learned something bigger in that process. Um, So, yeah, that's definitely something that I've noticed that, you know, there's always going to be different things that you can be doing. Mm. I absolutely love that. And I think we've we've often um, spoken um, both privately and on the podcast. We've had a number of conversations about the hesitation of people in general, but more so women to speak up or use their voice, put their hands up and contribute Mm -hmm. for fear of saying something silly or saying something wrong or asking the wrong question. And I love that piece of advice that you've given yourself. You know, at the end of the day, what we would love to just get out there as a message is there is no silly question. There is no silly statement. Whatever comes to your mind, put it out there, contribute because basically there will be someone else in the room thinking of the exact same thing that you're thinking and will be so grateful that you've used your voice to contribute in that way and share that share that share that with the the table or the boardroom or you know the team with with whoever it is so i think it's about genuinely like having that confidence regardless of whatever stage 
of your career that you're at to use your voice and speak up and and don't be scared to share your opinions um, or or your thoughts on any particular scenario. And I love what you said there about solutions and genuinely that solutions driven mindset. We love to say like, you know, don't see problems. What, what are the solutions? What are the solutions? And how can we overcome this? How can we move, move forward? And I think, again, that is something that is that is so powerful mm-hmm. for, for women to... And I think yeah. um, in order to know, you know, what areas you want to be focusing in as well, I always suggest to people that I'm mentoring or working with to actually come up with a business plan for yourself. What is your vision for yourself as a person? What are your values? What do you, what do you value? What do you want out of life? What do you want out of your career? Because then you can then tie day-to-day activities to aligning with what you believe in. So if you, you know, one of your values you want to have, you know, as speak up, you know, that's something that in your day-to-day, you're going to be backed by the fact that that's something that you value as yourself. Um, and so I think when we are, whenever I work with someone, that's step one. It's who are you? What do you want? What are your mm-hmm. values? And then you can move forward from there. Mm-hmm. I think that's really good self-awareness. And I think that a lot of things stem from self-awareness. I think when I sat down and did my values, that's when I started to really understand myself at a deeper mm-hmm. level. What drives me? You know, wh- why Why am I here? What am I here to do? What's my purpose? And values are something that I always come back to. And I don't know about, about you, Lauren, but when I sort of start to feel a bit sort of run down I sort of take a step back and go oh I'm actually moving quite far away from my values for example like my values um, two of my top values are health and growth I always like to feel like I'm growing hence why I listen to good podcasts read good books and I you know health is really important to me as well you know I like to keep active and I know if I move you know I get that's when I get my most creativity it's when I feel good it's when I feel energized so when you sort of, I guess, when you interview people to to work at Megaphone, what, what do you sort of like look for? Do you ask them, you know, what sort of questions are you asking? Because I did, I was watching um, a couple of videos on your um, social posts about, you know, how you hire and that you, you really do focus on those sort of like softer skills. That's really important to you. So what is the sort of like the process that you go through at Megaphone? And, um, you know, because obviously you've grown to four people to now 100 people. And it seems to me that the culture there is very, very good. So talk to us a little bit about, you know, your hiring process and the way you sort of go about that. Yeah. So I would say the best way to describe it would be attitude over skill. So somebody who has the mindset and is driven to learn and to try new things and to step outside of the comfort zone is going to have a better career tra- trajectory at Megaphone than someone who might tick the boxes on the skills that they have. Um, of course, it's great to have both. But I would always prioritize somebody that has the ability to learn and, you know, wants to learn. So that's a really cool part of my interview process is understanding if somebody's looking for a job where they can check in and check out or if they're going home and listening to podcasts, challenging the way that they believe things are or, you know, doing courses, reading books. I often ask as well in, in that, you know, what's the, what's the last book that you read or what's your favorite podcast? And I think you can instantly trap people out as well that, you know, aren't here for the right reasons, um, just for something simple like that. Mm-hmm. I, uh, one, you touched on something really important there as well, because um, this question I wanted to ask you, I was looking into the Megaphone's LinkedIn page and you're very, very big as a company on personal development. And this is something that Pam and I, our recruitment company are as well. We have like a book club. Um, our team can go and pick a personal development book every month and read it. And we really are we want our team to grow. We want our our team to learn and have that growth mindset because I do believe when people come to work, you know, feeling like they're growing, feeling like they've got purpose, they, they, they want, they enjoy their work. They feel like their work has meaning. So how have you gone about that? Like what sort of things do you do at Megaphone to really help people progress, not just in their careers, but also in their, their lives? Yeah. So there's a number of, a number of things that we've done. So one, I offer mentoring to people each quarter here at Megaphone. So that is often not working on what they do in their day-to-day. That's working on them and outside of work. One of my favorite initiatives that we brought in uh, late last year is Learn Hour. And so that's one hour every week, Thursday, 2 p.m. I think it is. And that's where you're not allowed to do any work. Can't have Slack on. You can't be working on any client work. You really just have to be learning. So the goal is that you get away from your desk, you read a book, you do a course. We've got a seminar room where people can go and sort of do a presentation as well. So there's a lot of different things and ways that people can come together over that. We also have a number of book clubs 
throughout the organization. Some of those are work related. Some of those are more mindset and personal development related as well. Um, and a lot of the workshops that we do here or speakers that we have come in really do focus on how to be the best version of yourself. Um, I'm a true believer that if we're working on the individual people at Megaphone, that's going to develop what we want from them as a company more than if we're, you know, constantly pushing the digital marketing side of things. Mm. I, I really, really love that as well because I think it is important to just keep in mind that we don't live to work, mm. you know, we work to live. So I think it is really important as a CEO to be sort of taking that message and filtering that from the top down because these things do come from the top down. And if that is genuinely, you know, if you hold those those values really core to you and you you genuinely believe that that is so important for that to filter throughout the organization, especially when you've got over a hundred people in your hands that I suppose as a CEO you feel are your responsibility that is just like such a beautiful way to be leading um, a huge team of individuals so I would like to say congrats Mm -hmm. on you know making sure that that is absolutely really a value that you hold dear um, to your organization because leading people is something that is you know you don't take it lightly you know this is people's livelihoods and you know it's just really important to be making sure that they feel supported in all areas of their lives um, and to have that encouragement to really think about their own personal growth outside of their own career I think is just absolutely beautiful Um, especially if you think about all the mental health issues and everything you know that are on the rise it's really important that you know you you really do feel supported in your place of work and I think that that just encourages people to come to work in a growth mindset you know it's 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 really setting people for success in all areas of life which really takes me really beautifully on to something that I'm really interested in and that is that of a role of CEO like sometimes you just you relate it to like the movies you know and you think oh my god CEO you just like put on your power suit and you swan in and you've got your beautiful laptop you know and it's just like such a beautiful glamorous role to be in Uh, but I can imagine that behind the scenes um, obviously there is just it would be very hard to switch off there's always something to do when you're running a company especially of the scale and size that you are and the growth that you've experienced over coming years so something that I feel really really interested in is how do you do it all how do you keep all those plates spinning because life isn't just all about work you know we all have other things that are happening outside of our own careers um so how do you how do you do it all what do you balance and how do you do it yeah, well, I definitely don't want to give you the illusion that um, I've always balanced it well. Uh, there's definitely <laughs> big times. Um, I think last year was a really interesting period because we'd come through all of the sparse growth through the past you know, years through COVID. And then, you know, coming out of that, it, it was a slightly different environment. We had people coming to work in the office and they didn't quite know how to work in the office. And it was it was quite a strange environment. So I took on a lot last year and I think, you know, Towards the end of the year, I started seeing that there wasn't actually a benefit of me working more than a certain amount per week. I don't think, I think there's a point at which the amount of hours that you deliver to something, it doesn't actually make it better. You just lose the hours from other areas in your life. Um, One of the things that really helps me to ensure that I don't fall into that sort of trap is to make sure that I have control over my day. So I look at that as starting with control over my morning. So when my alarm goes off, I get out of bed. I make sure that I can actually do something in the morning before going to to work. So that's typically I like to work out. I like to read something. So if I have worked out for my body and I have read something and that's my mind, I feel like I've ticked two really core boxes before I've started my day. Um, We all know that you can come home from work and you just don't feel like doing anything. So for me, if I've ticked those boxes in the morning, I have much more of a positive mindset, even if I decide to do, you know, nothing in the evening. Um, So keeping really active, just making sure that I look after all parts of me, that is really important. Um, And I think if you can get, if you get into a stressed state, you start to lose sight of those things. So again, it's important to tie back to your values and what you want from you as a person and make sure that you're actually reflecting on those often. I think one of the biggest mistakes I see is people writing down, you know, I want to do this in the morning, I want to do this, and, you know, these, this is my, these are my goals for the year. And then at the end of the year, 
you know, you jump in and look at your goals. And of course you didn't achieve them because you wrote them down once and you, you didn't look back on them. So constantly reminding myself as well of what I want to be doing and what I want to be achieving inside work, but also outside of work. Mm. I can totally relate to everything you've just said there because um, Pam will be smiling at this, but I'm also uh, a bit of an early riser. Um, I do love my morning routine and I'm totally with you, Lauren. If I haven't woken up and done some growth, whether that's going to the gym, putting on a podcast, um, starting my day with some meditation, going for a run. And I, I don't just say these things. I I absolutely do these things every single day. I'm not one of these people that says, oh, I do this and don't. If I don't do that, the day does not go my way. I can be a lot more um, short with 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 my partner, with my team. You know, I, I, I do believe that there needs to be this conversation when it comes to corporate that you can't pour from empty cup. And especially when you're a CEO or a founder or anyone in sort of any sort of leadership role, I think it's really, really important to do something every single day for you. Because otherwise you're just literally just people are going to come at your day with their demands, with their problems. And one thing I don't do, and this is, this is, this has been a massive game changer for me. I'd wake up and I got into the really bad habit of checking my phone first thing. And as soon as I opened that device, every everyone else's problems, emails, um, social media, it was just kicking off. And I thought, oh my God, that is the worst start to the day. So when it comes to you sort of protecting those boundaries, protecting those core habits that you know are going to set you up for success, like... Are there, is there anything else or any advice you'd give for somebody out there? Because, you know, I, I'm thinking about, you know, maybe um, a mum listening to this who is short on time or somebody that, you know, isn't very good in the mornings. Like what advice would you have for her or him or anyone listening to this right now that is like, that sounds great, Lauren, but I'm a busy mom or, you know, I just simply don't have the time to do that. What advice would you have for that person? Uh don't give up. So when I first started work, I um, started work at 9, 9 a.m. I would get up at 8.25. I would leave for work at 8.30. It was a 30-minute drive and I'd get to work at 9. And that was because I couldn't bear to get up a second before I had to. And so now fast forward probably 10 years from that, I get up at 5.30, 5.45 most mornings um, and then I can take control out of that. It's I actually saw something really interesting um, this week which was you have this standard pathway in your mind and that's the pathway that constantly that's what you want to do. So to make any change in yourself, you have to really build the other pathway and the other pathway is built through repetition. And so at the moment, you know, you, you could be sitting there 31 years old and, and you've every day you've got up as late as possible. That is your known pathway to build any other pathway is going to take you a really long time because that's what you've been doing for the last 31 years. So just knowing that it's not something that's going to be easy, it's not going to be instant, it's going to take a lot of work. And don't set yourself something, some ridiculous time to get up. You know, I've worked backwards from my 8 to 5 a.m. start over the past few years to get there. And, you know, even when I'm wanting to change the way that I do things, like I'm wanting to, to start going to the gym in the morning, just say, that's something where the first thing is, cool, I'm not going to uh, get up and get all the way to the gym. My first task is just getting up and I'm going to do, you know, 20 push-ups. And that's going to be my workout done for the morning. It's starting small and then working up from that. Once you're used to getting up at that time and doing those push-ups, add some more on. Maybe go out for a walk. Maybe the walk leads you to the gym in your next step. But just really set yourself up for success. Don't try and build the ideal scenario in your mind and try and get there instantly. Mm. That is really good advice. Yeah. And I'm actually laughing at a few things here because I, I actually think there is, regardless of what stage of your life you're at, um, I, I am actually a busy mum. I've got a six-year-old and a six-month-old. Um, Georgie um, has beautifully chosen to not have children at this stage of her life at the moment. But I don't care who you are, what stage of life you're at. There is struggle in the juggle, mm -hmm. regardless of what your life is like. And that is so such good advice that you've just dropped there about reversing it really, really slowly in terms of the ha working towards the habits that you want to create. Because let me tell you, we actually, my husband and I, we used to laugh because anytime we felt that like we were sort of falling out of flow with like, you know, motivation, like the sort of the healthy eating sort of drop was dropping off or we weren't quite able to just spring out of bed in the morning. We thought, right, Georgie and Kyle used to live up in the Gold Coast. We're like, right, 
let's book some flights and we'll head up to the <laughs> Hubbard Boot Camp uh, because we just find it really inspiring when Georgie says that her and Kyle really are dedicated to their morning routine. Mm. They don't miss a beat in mm. the morning and being surrounded by, you know, that type of energy and mm. dedication um, to making sure that you are able to show up as your, the best version of yourself throughout the course of the day. I always find that spending time with people that are really dedicated to that really, I find really inspiring and it uplifts me and it can very quickly get me back on track as well. Um, but if I can sort of relate to a couple of years ago, Lauren, I was sort of in a position where I was really struggling to try and find some time for myself. My daughter was really young. Georgie and I had started CH Solutions, a recruitment business under incredibly stressful um, circumstances. And I was completely and utterly in overwhelm and I, I was exhausted. So I was really struggling to get up in the morning and I was finding that my daughter was waking, waking me up and when she was waking me up, my day was just, it started like bottle, breakfast, ready, but yeah. you know, mm-hmm. um, and I went up to the Gold Coast and I read Robin Sharma, the 5am club, and I read that literally <laughs> and I came back and I started getting up at 5am. Wow. Mm-hmm. I felt as though I'd been hit by an absolute sledgehammer. And I was like, this is just not, it's not realistic Mm. to go from getting Mm. up at 6.30, which to me is just like a really reasonable, beautiful time to be up in the morning. All of a sudden to 5 a.m., it was pitch black. I felt as though I was waking up in the middle of the night. I was like, whoa, what's going on here? You know, so I think that is a beautiful takeaway that, Mm. of course, if you you want to create some phenomenal habits but start small Mm. start small don't just go hell for leather and start setting that alarm for 5 a.m because you're almost you are setting yourself up for failure because Mm. it is so hard to sustain whereas if you reverse that slowly you're more than likely to be able to continue it Mm -hmm. and install those habits for the long term so I love that piece of advice Mm -hmm. key takeaway for me yeah the the other thing I want to actually just say there as well because I think I'd love to watch you know, because obviously if you're getting up really early every day, your nighttime routine needs to be good as well. Otherwise you just, you know, you're running on lack of sleep, which can very quickly, as we all know, lead to some, some quite serious issues. So on the flip side of that, Lauren, like how do you, obviously after a really busy day at work, how do you unwind? Do you have sort of a bit of a routine that you do at the end of the day as well? Yeah, absolutely. So it depends how I'm feeling after work. I'd say it goes one of two ways first way is get home from work and I will try and read something for leisure uh take the dog for a walk so again I've kind of ticked those boxes again of reading something or listen to a podcast um and then take the dog for a walk which needs to be done anyway kind of like that I have um my dog as well so it's like I need to be held accountable to taking her for a walk that really gets me out there um and then it's just cooking food relaxing from there um and going to sleep trying to practice some form of mindfulness in there as well. Um, Alternatively, if it's been a day where my brain is absolutely fried, I might just sit on the couch and watch Friends and have a glass of red wine. And that's all. That's it. It's beautiful. We've all been there. We've all been there. (laughs) (laughs) Friends or sex in the city or just something that I can just (laughs) zone out to. That's what I like. In the morning. That's okay. Yeah. A hundred percent. Exactly. And I think it's so important because there was a time when I was really into personal development. I was like, I don't want to be sat watching Netflix. You know, I need to be learning and growing all the time. And that becomes quite toxic as well. So I think it's always checking in with yourself to making sure that you're not pushing yourself too much. Mm. Um, But look, you you have achieved so much um, already in your life. And I, I always find this really interesting to ask this to people who have had a level of success at a young age because you know people look at you now and go Lauren you've done it you've made it you're the CEO of a very successful company you know you're you're doing really well in your career and like how do you stay motivated how do you stay driven to keep on growing keep on being better like what motivates you now um versus what motivated you say like seven years ago when you first started your kind of your career yeah, I think well, when I first started, you know, I, I wanted to have the success. I wanted to heal things. I actually said to the founder in my first couple of months at Megaphone, um, what did I want to do in five years? I think it was. And it was, oh, I want to be in the C-suite, in a C-suite role in marketing. I was like, all right, sure. And, you know, we made that happen. But now every day that I come in, I have 100 people that are looking to me for the direction of the company. I have 100 people that have their careers 
that are riding on Megaphone being a company that I have said it will be. So it's really coming in and doing it for all these people. It's, you know, when Megaphone grows, that's really exciting. Or when we have a really strong vision or great team meeting, you know, that's something that people, that brings people excitement. And so I guess now it's for the, for the people as well. But I think for me, I guess outside of work, it's understanding that I can have a bigger impact on things outside of just one company. So starting to work with other entrepreneurs, other females in this space as well, and trying to, you know, open up conversations there, whether that's coaching or whether it's mentoring or, you know, just helping them out with problems, you know, understanding that the impact can be broader than just megaphone. So I think that's the next step that I'm still exploring as well. Um, and, you know, that's a, that's a really exciting part of the journey that I'm not quite sure where it's going to take me, but I think that's the exciting part. Mm. I think what, what I absolutely love is um, that you you sort of recognize the significance of how important it is when you are leading a company. Mm. Um, and I'm getting that sense of you really care about your people, um, which is which is just absolutely beautiful, Lauren. Um in terms of like our listeners at the moment, like we are really a sisterhood club. We want to ensure that we are working towards securing a women's place in the future of work. And the world is evolving at such a rapid rate. There's a lot of talk at the moment around what jobs are going to be made redundant, how industry is going to evolve, how AI is going to change the future of work. And we want to be making sure that we are encouraging more women to enter roles in technology, into digital, into marketing, because we genuinely feel that these are the careers of the future. And I would like to know, in terms of your industry, um, in terms of that marketing space and in the digital marketing, marketing agency world, how do you see your industry evolving over over the next few years and as a bit of a, an add-on to that question uh, not to not to drown you with too much but as part of that journey what sort of skill sets do you feel are going to be most in demand mm -hmm. as as that evolves yeah so I think you touched on an interesting point with AI I think that's a, a big topic of conversation in the digital marketing landscape at the moment I mean you can ask chat GPT one question and you can get an entire blog on it. You know, what is that doing for SEO? Um, I think that it's the same, well, I guess the same approach for me that it always has been. And it's that you need to be at the forefront of digital marketing because it's always going to change. And what you do today in three months time, that's not what's going to be getting results. And so it's the innovation. I think that, that I'm going to really value it's people that want to be ahead of the game. Um, and, you know, that is a specific skill set. I think you either have that desire to want to know new things and to want to discover new ways of doing things or you have the mindset of comfort over processes and systems. So for, for Megaphone and for this industry, we need to make sure that we have the innovators. Of course, we also need the processes and the systems, but they need to be driven by the innovators. So really identifying who is bringing that to the company um, is going to be incredibly important. As the technology side and as like AI takes a step up as well, I think the human emotional intelligence side of things is going to become even more important because that is what's going to be lacking through automation and through AI. You know, it's after all, it is still a computer. And so things like, you know, being able to build, build connections through marketing, that's a trend that we've even noticed since since COVID as well, is that people want more connection. They want things to be more personalized. They want to know that it's real. Um, you know, AI at the moment is something that you can kind of still tell that it's AI. And so in, in digital marketing, it's going to be how can you ensure that it can always be real and that that's something that's incredibly important through what we're seeing this year as well, making sure that everything is real. It's like TikTok, super real videos, nothing polished works on there. And that's a huge trend for the industry as well. Mm. That's really good advice as well. I think, you know, that whole emotional intelligence mm -hmm. piece is something Pam and I are very passionate about, you know, sort of those those softer skills, you know, like really, can you negotiate? Can you have, you know, empathy is a huge one as well. You know, I feel like you're leading with empathy and understanding is, is one that I think a lot of leaders, unfortunately, you know, do struggle with, um, especially if you're somebody that is very sort of, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll 
use myself as an example, I'm very driven. I'm very, you know, I'm, I'm very ambitious. And sometimes when someone's, you know, maybe having a hard time, I've, I've struggled in the past. It's something I'm working on to have empathy. It's like, why can't you just do it? Like what is holding you back? And it's like, sometimes I have a check in with myself to be like, Georgina, like, you know, not everyone is like you. And that's what makes, you know, this person unique as well. And so it's just like those softer skills, the leader is something that I'm really leaning into and checking in with myself conscious, you know, consciously all the time of like, okay, like, how am I showing up every day? How can I be better? And I think if everybody came to work every day with that mindset of like, you know, how can I embrace this new world? How can I be curious? How can I work on myself? You are going to set yourself up for success in the future of work. No one's perfect. We've all got flaws and things that we always need to work on. But if we don't want, you know, these tools to come in and replace us, we really need to be thinking now, how am I going to future proof myself and keep on upskilling and keep on getting better each and every day and really working on my my mindset as well because that is absolutely crucial um Lauren I am conscious of time this has already been an absolutely incredible conversation um and I could go in so many different ways and just keep on having this, this talk with you but what obviously like megaphone has achieved so much in a very short period of time i think there's a lot of people you know listening to this right now that you know maybe they want to start an agency or they want to start their own business what do you think has been what's what's contributed to megaphone's success if you could just sort of like pick out a few things that you think you've done really well as a company um and yeah advice for sort of young entrepreneurs out there wanting to build something for themselves I think if you're wanting to build something for yourself, don't start with the solution, start with a problem and come up with a solution to that. Um, If you are looking to start a company, start with the vision, start with what you want to stand by, start with what the values are and then build on it piece by piece from there. I think a lot of companies start with a product and then they try and build some values around what that product is and you you can see right through that. You can see that that's not... That's not real. And what converts these days through different companies and different businesses is is that vulnerability of a company. You know, it's understanding where that company has come from, what they stand by, knowing what you're going to get from that company, whether it's the content they put out or it's the product or whatever that is. So I think that the vision that we've set at Megaphone has been very clear. You know, we want to be the best place to work. And To be the best place to work means that you obviously have to have great people and you have to have a good offering so that clients love what you're doing so that there's growth. But that all boils down to being a great place to work and that's the goal. Um, So I think that that's been clear and obviously if if that's our goal, it's a really fun environment for people to work in. So it's a really great way for us to retain good talent but also attract talent as well. So we have a team filled with incredible digital marketers and so that has really helped us through these times. I mean, there's been incredibly busy times, there's been stressful times, but it's having the right people. Um, I think if, if you, I'd say another piece of good advice on the back end of that uh, would be if you feel like there's somebody that doesn't align with your company values, don't be afraid to have that conversation. Um, if somebody's not aligning with your values, then I can assure you every conversation that they have in the day is not aligning with what you want either. And it's always a very difficult decision to make and it's never a fun conversation to have, but it's one that will really impact your business if you don't have it. Yeah, that's that's some really, really solid advice. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that, you know, a lot of companies, we don't like having these challenging conversations, but the cost of not having it is far greater. And we've all got those, well, we've all experienced those, you know, places of work where there's that one person where it's just like it's almost like a cancer in your business you know like spreading negativity and you just think you've just got to get it will hopefully try and you know try and have a conversation with them and, and and make them aware of what they're doing and if they don't then change then that's you know that's for you to have that challenging conversation and make those decisions right that's all part of a, a part of being a leader yeah, this yeah, is it. It's, it's not all it's okay. Like, you know, there's yeah. so many company with was so many companies out there with so many different visions and different values. There is a right company and a right vision, right values for every person. So you're actually doing this person a favor if you can find them or they can find their company that's going to actually, you know, really motivate them and excite them to work there. So you can almost look at it as as a two way street there. 
Mm. Lo- that's absolutely a beautiful way to summarize it actually you you mm. want to ensure that people are set up for success mm. like I genuinely want everyone that comes through our doors to feel as though they are succeeding but that might not necessarily mean that their skill set is right for mm. whichever yeah. business that, mm. or whichever position it is that we've we've hired them for but there's absolutely there's there's a right place for everyone mm-hmm. but if it's not right for your business then absolutely do not be afraid to call it out because you're doing your business a favor but you're also doing that individual mm-hmm. a huge favor as well so I, I really love that solid solid piece of advice for anyone out there that's going to be in a position of hiring at the moment you're you're actually being kind by having the tougher conversations Mm, definitely so lauren where can we send people to find out more about you about megaphone um where should we put people yeah so linkedin uh lauren oaks of linkedin at megaphone um and lauren oaks ceo is my instagram and also the same on tiktok um i'm still in the early stages of my tiktok career um but working on it (laughs) Love it. Yeah, TikTok is a minefield for me. I've not quite figured it out yet, but um, I'll be sure to give you a follow on TikTok as well. But amazing. Lauren, thank you so much for your time today. I hope that everyone listening to this has got some amazing takeaways. I know I have. I'm feeling extremely inspired. Uh, so thank you so much for this amazing conversation. And uh, if you are listening to this, please make sure you hit that subscribe button. Go and fo- follow Lauren and Megaphone and we will speak to you again very soon. Have a great day. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. If you enjoy these episodes, the number one thing you can do to help us grow and keep spreading our mission and message is to hit the subscribe button. And if you have time, give us a quick rating. Appreciate each and every one of you who tune in every week and we look forward to bringing you many more episodes this year. Take care.